Hi everybody, this is Laura and Arnie with Crazy Cool Cakes. Check out our beautiful and edible Valentine's Day box of chocolates cake topper. Before we get started, we'd like to invite you to check out all of these wonderful Valentine's Day tutorials created by our Dessert Network friends. You can find all the links underneath our video. Time to enjoy our box of chocolates. To make it, I'm going to start by rolling out some light pink gum paste and this is going to be a little bit on the thick side and I'll be using an oversized heart cutter to cut out the heart shape. I'll be doing this twice, one for the lid and one for the base. To create the sides of the box, I'm going to roll out some more pink gum paste and I'm going to roll this out even thicker than I did the base and lid. I need these strips to be able to stand up on their own. I'm using my ruler to help me cut out two strips and each one of these is going to be three quarter of an inch wide. Before I start working with these, I'm going to line them up and trim off the ends. To create the size of the bottom of the box, I'm going to place each strip on the base and I'm going to trim it to length. I want it to cover exactly half of the box. I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the edge and then I'm going to place this strip onto the heart. I want to make sure it's standing up nice and straight and give it a good little press to make sure it's stuck. I'm going to do the same exact thing with my second strip and I'm going to place it on there and measure and trim it so that the ends meet up perfectly. Be sure to add a little bit of glue to the ends for a tight seal. Then just a little more glue right on the edge of the other half of the heart. I'm carefully placing this strip onto the heart and I want to make sure that my ends meet up perfectly. Press the ends together to make sure they're nice and stuck. I've cut out two more strips the exact same length and I'm going to use the bottom of the box to help me determine how long these strips need to be. These two strips are going to be glued to the lid of the box. As you can see, once the lid is closed, these two strips are going to be right next to each other. It's important to mention that all of your strips should be the exact same height. That way when we close the lid of the box, it'll be nice and flush. Once you've measured and trimmed your second set of strips, we can go ahead and place our little box aside. And now we're going to add glue to the bottom of the strips and we're going to place them onto the lid. Remember that these strips are going to be placed on the inside of the heart and you know you put them in the right place when your ends meet up perfectly. Don't forget to add a little bit of glue at the end of the strip for a nice tight seal. Give everything a good little press down and make sure it's standing up nice and straight. While our box is drying, we can start working on our chocolates. For the first one, I'm going to take a small ball of brown gum paste and I'm going to turn it between my fingers while gently pressing down so that the bottom and top will get nice and flat. Then I'm going to gently pinch the edge all the way around so that it's nice and sharp. This chocolate is going to have tiny little sprinkles. I'm using chocolate brown and an even darker brown to roll out two tiny little thin worms. Then using my straight blade, I'll cut these up into tiny little pieces. Now that I'm done, I'm going to mix them all up. The easiest way to glue these on is just to add a little bit of glue to the top of the chocolate and then just carefully place them on there. When you're done, make sure that you give them all a good little tap down to make sure they're nice and stuck. This next chocolate is going to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to roll this into a capsule shape and I'm going to use my fingers to flatten the top and bottom as well as the sides. I'm trying to achieve a plump little rectangular shape. Now I'm going to use a small modeling stick to press in some small grooves into the top of the chocolate. This one kind of reminds me of a Twix, one of my favorites. This next little chocolate is going to be in the shape of a square, so use your fingers to give you four sides. And then once you're done flattening the top and bottom as well as the sides, you want to go ahead and pinch the corners. Nice and sharp. For the design on the top of this chocolate, I'm going to use my needle tool to press in several little lines across the top. The less parallel the lines are, the more realistic and cute it looks. Hmm? See what I mean? This next chocolate is going to be a dark chocolate, and for this I just simply added a little bit of black to my dark brown to get this beautiful color. This is a circular chocolate like the one we previously made. This one will have a beautiful swirl pattern on the top and for this I'm using my medium sized ball tool. I'm carefully pressing in little by little to make sure that I don't tear my gum paste. I'm making another little dark brown chocolate and this one's going to be a square shape just like the one we previously made. The design on the top of this chocolate is going to be a very irregular shape and for this I'm using my medium sized Martha Stewart ball tool. I'm pretty much following a picture that I had in front of me, but you can create any type of pattern you'd like. If you're interested in any of the tools you see in this tutorial, remember you can always find the list in the show more section underneath the video. I've added just a few little details with my tiniest little ball tool. This next dark chocolate will be an oval shape, so I've started off by rolling it into a capsule shape, and then I want to make both ends a little bit pointy. Then I'm going to flatten the top and the sides as much as possible. For a nice sharp edge, I'm going to pinch all around the top. 
The design on the top of this chocolate is very simple and I think it's my favorite. For this I'm using my medium sized ball tool and I'm just gently pressing it in right on the edge to create a nice oval shape. Cute. Our last chocolate is going to be a white chocolate and for this I'm using a creamy ivory gum paste. This is also going to be an oval shape so we're going to do the same exact things that we've done before. For the design on the top I'm going to use my needle tool once again and I'm going to press in three lines, two coming from one side and one from the other. Follow the beginning of the lines down the side just a little. This will give our chocolate cute little dents. I can't get enough of these little chocolates, they're just so much fun to make. The last thing we're going to create for our chocolates are the little wrappers that they're going to sit in. For each chocolate I'm going to cut out a 3 quarter inch wide strip. To create this extremely dark brown I added even more black gum paste to my brown gum paste. I've placed the strip on top of a thin foam and I'm using my needle tool to press in tiny little lines. This will give the wrapper a nice pleated look. Now all I need to do is loosely wrap the wrapper around each chocolate and I'm going to trim what I don't need. Now I'll just add a little bit of glue around the base of the chocolate and then add the wrapper, nice and loose. Add a tiny little bit of glue at the seam and nudge it closed. Then just gently press the wrapper up against the bottom of the chocolate to make sure you have a good seal. Spread the wrapper out at the top so that it looks natural. Do the same thing for all your other chocolates. How beautiful are these? Now this is the funnest part, adding them and arranging them to our box. Add a little bit of glue to each chocolate and then just place it where you think it'll look best. It'll help to actually pre-arrange them into the box, that way you know exactly where they're going to go. Once added, you can actually nudge them around however you see fit. You still have a while before the glue sets. I'm going to decorate my box with a beautiful red ribbon and bow. I'm cutting out a 3 quarter inch wide long strip of red gum paste. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of glue to the back of it. I'm carefully centering it on top of my box and then gently pressing the sides all the way down to my work surface. Then I'm trimming off what I don't need. For my bow I rolled out some more red gum paste and I'm going to cut out a long strip the width of my ruler which is about an inch and a half wide. I've trimmed one end and now I'm going to trim the other end at about 5 inches in length. I'm folding my strip in half and gently pressing down on the center so that I can see the mid mark. I'm going to gently fold and squeeze the center of the bow and add a little bit of glue to keep it closed. I'm going to do the same thing for the ends of the bow and after adding a little bit of glue I'm going to give them a little pinch to keep them closed. If you haven't yet be sure to check out my tutorial on how to create bows just like this one but on a much larger scale. We also have a tutorial on how to add large bows to a cake, be sure to check those out. I flip my bow over and I'm adding a little bit of glue to the center. Flatten each loop and then we can glue the ends to the center of the bow by adding a little bit of glue. If you've never made bows before you should try it. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to use an extra little piece I had left over to create the two little ribbons that come out from the bow. I'm going to trim each one at an angle and then cut out a little triangle at the end of them. I'm going to place them on my box just to measure. I don't want these too long so I'm going to trim off what I know I don't need, add a little bit of glue to both ends and then place them right in the center coming out at an angle. You can glue the ribbons on a little wavy to make them a little bit cuter. For the center of the bow I rolled out some red gum paste, fairly thin, and I'm cutting this into about an inch and a half wide strip. I'm adding a line of glue right on the edge and I'm going to use my straight blade to help me lift the very end and I'm going to gently just tap it down and this will create a fold on this side of the strip. I'm going to flip this over and then I'm going to use my blade to help me create more pleats along this strip. Using the blade this way will ensure that my folds are nice and straight. In total I'll have two pleats and after the second fold I'm going to add a little bit of glue right in the center to make sure that it doesn't open up on me. I'm going to flip this over one last time and add a little bit of glue right on the edge and again I'm using my blade to help me. Once I tap down the entire edge I'm going to use my blade to help me straighten it out. To make it a little easier to work with I'm going to trim the ends off. Then I'm going to add a little bit of glue all along the back and place it right on the center of the bow and gently press it down. I'm going to further trim off any excess because I want to make sure that this meets up perfectly in the back. We don't want it too bulky. What a cute little bow. To add it to our lid all we need to do is add a little bit of glue to the back and then we're going to just center it right on top of our two little ribbons. You can use your ball tool to press down the inside of the loops towards the lid, that way you don't mess up your bow. 
Let's finish off our box of chocolates with a nice little steam. This will get rid of all of the edible glue stains and will make everything shiny and beautiful. Whoa, where'd I go? <laughs> now my camera is shiny and clean too. Beautiful. Here's our finished Valentine's Day box of chocolates. Now tell me, who wouldn't love to see this on their Valentine's Day cake? Just beautiful. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we want to wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. And don't forget to check out all these other wonderful Valentine's Day tutorials. You can find the links underneath our video. We have more fun and creative Valentine's Day tutorials for you to check out. If you'd like to learn how to make a beautiful Be Mine Valentine's Day cake, click on the video on the left. In this tutorial, I teach you how to hand carve an entire beehive cake. It's so much fun. If you'd like to learn how to sculpt some adorable little robots in my nuts and bolts cake topper tutorial, click on the video on the right. If you happen to be on a mobile device, you can find links to these tutorials in the show more section underneath our video. We'd like to invite you to visit our online shops where you can find more tutorials and our handmade merchandise. We would also love it if you could follow us on our social media. You can find all the links underneath our video. But more importantly, please don't forget to subscribe. We love and appreciate all of our subscribers.